<clears throat> Hi, I'm Buck WSR Weezer, and today we're putting the do in the do-it-yourself. We're refinishing the RV countertops. I've got it laid out in front of me. Obviously, I've uninstalled it already from the RV, and the oven stove was here, sink here. And I'll tell you the work that I've done so far. There was a tri a rectangular cutout right here where a, a block was inserted for holding knives. We wanted to get rid of that. So I blocked that off, filled it in with wood putty. These are the three holes for the faucet. There was another hole right about there for the uh, purified w drinking water. And I've been eliminating that, so I did the same thing with, with wood filler and sanding it off. And obviously the sink goes here. So this was your, your typical countertop, and I have primed over it. And the product that I use for the primer, hang on people. I'm okay. <laughs> I primed it with a brush with Zinsser Cover Stain. This is an oil-based primer sealer, which I love. It makes it excellent. Uh, it kills stains and makes an excellent base coat over which you can put pretty much any kind of paint. Next step that you're going to experience with me now is spray painting it with this product, Rust-Oleum Multicolor Textured Paint. Now, I want to show you what it looks finished product will look like before I actually do this because I started with some of the smaller countertops and I'm going to bring one out to show you. So this, this there, there's a corner cabinet at one spot in the RV and this is the countertop from on top of it. So this is the effect that the that this multicolor Rust-Oleum spray paint has. We're gonna do that here on the main. I wanted to try it first on a small counter before doing it on the larger kitchen counter. There'll be a third step where we coat it all with resin to make it hard, uh, glossy, beautiful, durable. That's still a future step. So I've been shaking this can like a maniac and now it's time to apply it. The glasses are going on. I actually have a total of three cans. It takes several coats. What you see at first is not real impressive, but with each additional coat it gets better. I found out doing those other pieces, smaller pieces, you don't want to hold it too close. You need 12 to 15 inches away. Otherwise, it, it glops up, it was on too thick, and several thin coats is really better. Are you ready? Let's see what we get here. As I like to say, put it on and move on. And as you can see, it's unfortunately a little bit windy out here today, it doesn't look like much here at the first coat. So I'm doing the edges of the sink, and now I'm going to do the edge of the countertop, then I'll do the top. You're not impressed so far. Trust me. You saw the finished piece. So the first couple of coats I put on just with a left and right motion, and then I had, you could see the lines in it. So like the last coat I do with, with this last coat or two, I do it in more of a circular motion that hides any of those striped patterns that you get when you're just going left to right.
I got a total of three cans. Which I hope will be enough. But if not, I'll get another because you gotta put on enough. And at, you know, five bucks a can, it's not that big of an investment. Did those other pieces yesterday, there was much less wind. All right, so there's one coat. I'm gonna wait a few minutes and then we'll come back and recoat it. But I'm happy so far how it's going. Starting the second can now and coating it for the second time. You can kind of see how, because of my method, you get a striped look to it, which I don't really want. So after this coat, I'm going to use a circular pattern to my spraying. I think that's going to help. All right. Sorry. You're okay. Don't worry. I got you. Try a little bit of that circular technique I was referring to. Okay, so today's the day we start our top coat on the countertops, and we're going to be using Parks Super Glaze Pour On Finish and Preservative. So I'm a little nervous about it because it's not a product I've ever used before, nor a technique I've ever used before. But there's all the stuff laid out that we're going to need. And we are working today inside the RV, and I'm going to coat the two smaller pieces of countertop. The one from the bathroom, and then down there is the one from the corner cabinet, which exists down that hallway and to the left a bit. I'm really happy with how the, uh, the gray speckled uh, spray paint turned out. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good, especially when dry. And now I think with this super high gloss, crystal clear, hard uh, um, finish on top, this epoxy on top, I think this is going to get it done for us. So I'll leave the big kitchen countertop, which will go right here for another day and I'll get my experience trying it on these smaller pieces of countertop. All right, so let's take a look at our materials. You've got to read those instructions very carefully. Um, and the mixing is apparently super important. So here, here's what we've got. We got our part A mix and our part B, the activator. So part A is the resin, part B is the activator. And I have one, two, three disposable mixing containers, one I've labeled A, one I've labeled B. And I have made a mark two inches from the bottom with a, with a marker on two inches up because you need to use equal parts and that's going to be my line for this first batch. Then you need a third mixing container because the way it's done is A is poured into B, mixed for three minutes, then B is poured into the third container, again mixed for another three minutes. So additionally, I've got my gloves, or guantes as they say in Spanish, a mixing uh, paddle, a couple of disposable brushes, because I'm going to use those on the edges, of course, my cup of coffee in a Christmas mug, even though it's only 
August. So I'm ready to just put my gloves on, get measuring, get mixing. So here we go. Okay, so I'm already making adjustments. When I poured up to two inches from part A, I realized I used up almost all the bottle, at least two thirds of it, and I don't want to use that much. So I drew and poured some back in uh, to the bottle, made another mark on both at inch and a half because that's probably more than I'm going to need for these first two pieces. Um, so I got an inch and a half at each and so the next step then is going to be to pour A into B and to mix gently for three minutes using this rubber spatula stirring slowly scraping the sides and I've got my timer because I'm going to stop I'll clock it for three minutes as per the instructions here we go part A goes into part B they say very frequently in the instructions not to use any powered mixing device like a drill or anything like that just to mix it by hand carefully because you want to avoid too many the presence of creation of too many air bubbles all right let's start at the stopwatch and begin mixing They call for mixing containers that have straight sides and a flat bottom. I did the best I could with these. Because they want you to be able to scrape the sides gently. Alright, I think we probably got as much of this out as we're going to get without going nuts. Alright, so let me mix for another two and a half minutes and I'll see you again for the next stage of mixing. Okay, that's three minutes with the first stage of mixing. Next, we take our next container and we're going to pour that, this mixture, into the new container and mix again for another three minutes. It actually says uh, three to five, minimum three, but no more than five. So let's begin. This is a product that they say you can put on in multiple coats if one is not sufficient. So I guess we're just going to have to wait to find out. Okay, now comes the part that I'm a little bit anxious about. And uh, that's the pouring. I'm used to painting. I'm a painter. I do have a brush, and I'll be using the brush on the front edge. I feel like it's going to, I'm going to start here and let it come this way. And if it drips over the edges, I don't think that's a problem. I think that's actually part of it. So here we go. The instructions say you get about 20 to 25 minutes of work time. And once it starts setting up, you need to stop working it. I get that. I think that's all I'm going to do on the top. because I worry about overworking it. Let's see if I can just paint the side, this front edge, which obviously won't be able to go on as thickly as the top. Now this is more of my liking, I'm a painter. So oh, I'm not really much into these disposable brushes. I never liked them. 
but here's one application where I think it's a legitimate use. All right, that's kind of dripping down the front and uh, I'm leaving it like that. Let's move on to the, uh, to the next piece. All right, now this is the bathroom vanity, smaller. Yeah, so I think I put it on nice and thick in the back there, and I've got a slight angle that it's running down, the excess is running down the front and dripping off the front edge, and I actually think that's fine. I actually feel good about that. I'll be able to clean up that bottom edge after it firms up a little bit. All right, let's try this guy. Well, now we're working on the kitchen cabinet, our countertop that goes, to the, and we're working inside the RV. I've already mixed up my three minutes and two interval, intervals, and you know what I'm saying, because you've already seen it. All right, so I'm going to start here on the biggest section of the countertop. I've leveled it off, and because uh, I don't want it leaning too heavily in any one direction. And here we go. I used up all the remaining product and hopefully that's going to be enough to do this. So my mixing stick is the same as my is the same thing I use for the spreader. Put it on and move on. That's one of my mottos. That's a good motto for painting or anything like this by which we can avoid excessive manipulation of the material. Love the alliteration. Occasionally you get some air bubbles so you can blow on them lightly and they disappear. It's amazing. Or you can use like a little heat gun or hair dryer on low setting. I didn't show you that previously, but it, I tried it off camera and it worked really well. It's amazing those air bubbles just kind of disappear. Well, here's the finished product, our refinished countertops. Now, I haven't put the stove back up yet, so there's that space still there. I did install the sink, a brand new sink, but the drain's not hooked up, and this faucet is actually just sitting there. So it's not connected, doors are still off the cabinet, so I still have some work to do. But in terms of our refinishing of the countertops, that turned out really, really nice. I do have a blemish here. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe not. Not a big deal, really. But what's nice about this job is I didn't have to buy new countertops. I didn't have to cut anything. Everything is going to fit and go back right in place. And I really think this main kitchen countertop turned out really, really good coming around here the other ones we worked on this little corner cabinet looks pretty good also doesn't that look good may end up painting those cabinets too and coming here into the bathroom 
new sink and faucet complementing that new refinished countertop really turned out give you some more light here really pretty nice what I did notice is uh, because you, you level out the countertop when you're applying it, it's able to sit on top of there nice and thick. It doesn't go on as well on the sides because, of course, they're vertical surfaces. So if we ever get some more of this product, maybe for another project, I might just uh, paint on and on the edge here again just to make that a little bit thicker because I feel it's a little thin there. The one on the top, it's beautiful. Well, I'm Buck WSR Weezer. Thanks for joining me on this how-to project. I know the video's been a little bit long, but uh, hopefully this will inspire you. really turned out great, and I thank you for joining me on this project. I'd love to have your comments, questions, and look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.